Welcome back to Morning Footy. I'm sitting down with one of the OGs of soccer in this country. When you think of soccer, you, you were, your name was synonymous with just the, the next star, the next Pele, if you will. Uh, for some viewers who, who may not be familiar with just how big you were, what, what your name meant to people in this country, I always equated you to the and one mixtape. You, you were the Neymar for, for, for me, for, for everyone in this country. You could dribble anyone. I, I think of that U-17 World Cup for, for my year. You dribbled the whole South Korean team. <laughs> it was all over YouTube. That's where we had to find this. And then I finally get to, to play with you in the under 20 uh, World Cup qualifying camp. And I just remember seeing your big smile. You were open. Yeah. And you, you just said, you got to express yourself. <laughs> what, 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 what were your memories during that time? I mean, just incredible, amazing memories, right? Um, everything just kind of happened so fast. I mean, I was down in Bradenton, um, and then all of a sudden, just names started getting bigger and bigger. I, um, my, you know, I, people started to recognize me and whatnot. And then, you know, once uh, we went to the U-17 uh, World Cup, right after that, it just kind of took off. Um, when I signed with, uh, with Nike and then signed with the league, with MLS, everything just kind of blew up after that and kind of you're on I, I, mtv <laughs> you're on trl you you were in jay-z and lil wayne's songs like what i remember i remember how you know how cool i thought everything was because that was the goal that was the dream right the dream was always to become a professional soccer player i achieved it so young i was living the dream i loved it uh, my family was set i mean everything just was it, it was an amazing time. It really was. You were doing commercials. Yes. With Pele. Yes. I remember going to a red carpet event, the Spike TV video game. Oh, awards, yeah. And you're walking the red carpet <laughs> with Vin Diesel. Yeah. The Fast and the Furious movie was yeah. just made. And Victoria's Secret models were saying, Freddie, come hang out. I, I thought, what is going, what, where am I? What do you remember about me dur during that, that time? Charlie, you've always been that dude, though. You no, know that. No, I wasn't that guy no, you, no, no, no. You had swag from the beginning. That's the thing. I remember you. I mean, obviously, I remember playing with you. Charlie was, uh, you were, I mean, you had, you had earned a lot of respect from everybody. I mean, you, you were, you know, scoring a lot of goals for us when we played together. Um, you know, and, and, and you were a really fun, cool guy to be around. <laughs> Thank you. You were. <laughs> so you are today, too. <laughs> I, know. I always looked at you as a, as a brother when we were coming up. You know, yes, we're sir. both coming from Region 1. Yes, sir. And I think our path, connecting U-20s, then we got to play in the Olympics together. That was a big moment for us. Yep. But what was your favorite moment playing with the U.S. full men's national team? Because we, we both played, played together. Um, and shared some some fantastic memories. Yeah, I mean, you know, getting a chance to be a part of that. For me, um, those rivalries, you know, games against Mexico, um, getting a chance to be a part of the team for the uh, Confederations Cup, my man. Um, and, uh, you know, and of course, the Gold Cup, when, uh, you know, which was my last tournament with the national team as well. I mean, those those are great memories that I have personally with the with the men's national team. But when you talk about just as far as national teams go with even the, the youth national teams and whatnot, the 17s, the 20s, the Olympics, they were fantastic. I mean, I, I, those were the days, man. What, the, what was your best game for the full team? Oof. You say if you had to pick one game, what was your, your best game in a, in a US kit? Gold Cup final 2011 uh, against Mexico. Best game I ever played. Which was your Unfortunately, last game. it was the last game I ever played with the national team as well, yep. So you and I share something in co really in common in terms of playing our last U.S. Men's National Team game at our highest moment, our yeah. peak. I got to qualify for the World Cup in 2009 in Honduras. I, I have those memories of popping champagne. You know, you're feeling good. You get to play in a match that we all dream of as, as footballers in this country to mm -hmm. play against Mexico. It, it, you had your best game. Obviously, the result wasn't there, right, but you, right. you had your best game. What were you feeling after that game? Because it, um, it took eight years to get there. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. Like, so for me personally, 
yes, we lost that game, but I felt like I had finally arrived, especially on the national team level, because I was in and out of the lineup, I was coming off the bench. Even for that particular tournament, I didn't play at all until the semifinals. I came in as a sub um, against Panama, and I made a difference when I was on the field, and I earned, you know, Bob's trust at the time. And then he decided to start me in the final, and I responded. I, it was a huge responsibility. I mean, having your first start be against Mexico in a Gold Cup final, that's not an easy thing to do. So, you know, I went in there. I, I remember I was like, man, this is it, man. This is your chance. You got to take it. You got to make a difference out on the field. You can't just be a passenger on the field, right? And so I went in there, and I took full advantage of it. And I remember, yeah, we were all, we were all sad after the game, but I was like, finally, right? Finally, I felt like I had arrived on the national team. And to this day, it hurts my soul that I never got a chance to play for the national team again. So you still, you, you still think about that? Of course, because, you know, I, 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 think that, I thought that was the beginning of something special, right? Um, but unfortunately, that was the end. Uh, for me with the national team because uh, Bob got fired right after that and then uh, uh, Jurgen came in and I was just never a part of the plans after that. So I'm, I'm guessing when we look back, mm -hmm. you always say what ifs, right? Yep. Is there a moment that you could pinpoint and say, I wish I did this differently? Because I, I obviously the car accident for me in 2009, right. I don't get in the car, but ultimately I think my mentality needed to change. So if you could go back, what would that be? The one thing that I, the one decision I made that I would have done differently, that I wouldn't, I would have made a different decision when I go back and think about it, would have been leaving Benfica after the first year that I was there and going on loan to Monaco. To me, that was the one decision that started the snowball of me having to go from, uh, on loan from team to team uh, because I wasn't patient enough to stay at Benfica. On the flip side of that, a guy like Di Maria, who was with me at Benfica, decided to stay at Benfica. A new coach came in, he played. Next thing you know, he balls out, ends up on Real Madrid. I go to Monaco. There was a power struggle between the, the, the coach and the, and the president. The president wanted me really bad. The coach at that time, um, he didn't feel like I was ready, I guess. So I didn't play. I didn't get a chance to play a lot. And after that, everything just kind of snowballed. So that one decision, and I'm not blaming anybody for it because I made that decision. That one decision to me, I would have made a different, I would not have gone to Monaco if I could do that again. And when I always say, if I just, push through it and, and, and listen to some of the people that I, I should have listened to, mm -hmm. the role models, if I had that, somebody I could rely on, it, it maybe would have been a, a difference different. maker. The 33 year old Freddie Adu, what are you telling the 14 year old Freddie Adu? If you could go back in time and you have this conversation with him. And I, w I would have said just put all the other distractions to the side and just focused on my craft, focused on getting better. That's one thing that I'll be honest with you, I don't think I did enough of when I was younger. I, I would go in, we would have training, I would go home, and that was that, right? Um, if, if I had to go back and do that, I'd be, after training, I would stay behind for another hour or so, work on certain things I needed to work on, um, you know, because I wasn't, yeah, you had the name, yeah, you had all the, you know, adoration and all that stuff, but, I just, I, I wasn't there yet, you know? And, you know, but at 14, I felt like I was, you know, because I, I was young, well, you know? I, I think people don't understand your name, right. your stature. What were some of those temptations? What were some of those distractions that didn't allow you to go down this path? Look, man, I, I, I let's keep it 100. I was getting into like, I was able to get into places where, you know, a teenager wasn't supposed to be getting into, right? So, you know, I had a lot of friends, all my friends were older because I played up 
when I was younger. And a lot of, the, you know, we were able to go to, you know, uh, College Park, Maryland, and we'd get into all the bars and whatnot. You know, just, just little stuff like that, right? Um, and so I, I was enjoying all that stuff um, I, I, rather than so, you know, focusing on, 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 on my, you know, let's say the little things like, you know, getting the rest you need, your diet, your, you know, getting some stretching in, you know, just taking care of your body, so to speak. And I didn't do enough of that. I just didn't. And my performance, you know, you can get away with it a little bit when you're younger, but as you get older, those are bad habits, right? So when you have bad, when you get into bad habits, it's hard to change when you get older. So as I got older, I started feeling it more. You know, I started getting these little, you know, my lower back was tight. I was having problems with my lower back, and I've had them my whole career, right? I remember in yeah. the 20s yeah. in fitness, you were like, oh, yeah. my lower, my I lower said, back. Oh, I, he's playing, he's pulling the star card. Yeah, <laughs> no, I had them my whole career. So, you know, it's, it's, it's things like these that, that, you know, I would, I would, I would do differently, you know? And, and really when I, when I, when I look back at, I wish I had someone that was, you know, telling me to do these Stay things. Stay straight. Stay straight, exactly. You know, because... It, it, uh, it's, 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 I know, it's a tough foundation yeah, to break. Yeah. If, if you started doing these things at a young age, right. it's hard to break that habit. Right. It's a habit. Yep. I still get it to this day from, from fans. Man, what could have been? Do you still get the what happened to Freddie? You do? Oh what yeah. To you? Well, I got it all the time. I got what, random people. I got random your, people sending me messages on Twitter all the time. How, how, hey man, how what, do you resp how, how would you respond to that? If they you say, say what happened to Freddie? You do? What do you say to that? I mean, uh, you know. I made wrong decisions. <laughs> I, I didn't live up to my my potential. Like, like what, what do you say to that? Like I'm just like, look, man. You know, sometimes having all the talent in the world is not enough. You know, you gotta you you gotta work. You're, you got to work your butt off, man, to, 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 to maximize that talent. And guys that aren't as talented as you, if they work their asses off, they're going to surpass you. And it happened in my case. There were few guys that obviously weren't as talented, but they put in the work, right? Um, and they had way more success. They Freddie, got more out Freddie, of their... Who was, who was even close to you talent-wise? Nobody. You were here. There was not a single player who had <laughs> your technical ability. Not a single player. Right. Everyone had to work h harder than you to even come close to you, right? You, right. Were, you were that guy. Right, right. You right, were right. Neymar. You were Messi. No, you I, were, I, I you know. Were... I know. Um, like I, I mean, I know. Look, I, 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 I was given a God-given, you know, talent. And, you know, I did the most I, can, I could with it, but some decisions I made... And certain things that I did prevented me from, from, you know, basically just realizing it to the fullest potential. And I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, yeah, I did everything I wanted to do. No, I didn't. I didn't. Um, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. I learned from it. I am, uh, like I said, I, I said earlier that, I, you know, I'm trying to pass on all these things to these kids now, you know, because I've seen it from both sides. I have. You know, you've seen it when you're when you're on top, and you've seen it when things aren't going right, and you're at the bottom. So, I've seen it from both sides. So, so if you ever hear, you're a bust. Like, how does that make you feel? I like, don't. I actually, it doesn't bother me. You know why? Because you know, I don't think I had the opportunity to to really. Um, th there are certain things that that obviously, like I said, I could have done differently. But you know, everybody, you can't please everybody. Everybody's gonna have their opinion, and and and. Some people just do it just to try and get under your skin, too. So I, I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. To me, it sounds like you have found peace. Of course. You have no regrets. You lived a, an incredible life. Yeah. You, you've played, what, nine countries, 15 yeah. clubs? I've what do you, what of... do you miss the most? I just miss being in the locker room with the guys, man. Um, just, just the grind of it, right? Every day in practice, you go out there, you're done, you're in the locker room sharing jokes, you know, and just laughing, sometimes people, you know, people getting into it a little bit. I miss all that, man, I if, really do. If we're in the locker room right now, playing together, what do you think I'd say to you about you right now? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and not for TV, bro. Right. I'm, t- I'm saying, how are you going to come into the studio without a proper haircut? <laughs> you used to have them waves on, on lockdown. Yep. I would get yep. seasick looking at your yeah. hair. Um, I gave them waves up a long time ago. Man. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're going with the fro. Fredua and the fro. Yeah, I, I like it. Man. So what's the next chapter for Freddie to do? What, what's the legacy that you want to leave? Because I remember thinking when I retired, I felt, I felt peace. Right. And now I'm like, I want to have a better, I want to be known for this second part of my life right. over my playing career. I want to inspire and give back, and this yeah. is the path that you see. So what's, what's next for you? Um, I mean, like I said, like you, you know, like you said, I do want to inspire and, 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 and you know, help this next generation of kids and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, for me, moving forward, I, um, I still, you know, I do love the, the you know, the, the, the coaching part. I, I didn't think I would. But I ended up absolutely loving it. So I've been doing it for a while now. And now, you know, for me now, I think, uh, you know, just being able to, to, to you know, just, just work in soccer, heck, be in a studio like this, you okay. know, get, get into the game, you know, get into the analyst, uh, um, you know, sort of business. Uh, uh, I think, I think that will be fantastic. Do you have your, so if all I your have coaching chance, badges? No, I don't. I don't. Um, you know, right now, like I said, I just do it. It's just personal you know, with the kids, I don't do any teams or anything like that. I just wanted, I like the one, one-on-ones, the, you know, having like the group of four, four, you know, kids, just helping them uh, better their skills and whatnot. Do you still like got I said, it? Bruh. It never leaves, huh? It never goes Class away, Class is man. permanent. <laughs> it never so goes you, away. So you're welcome to the retirement world with me now. Now we, we walk together in this next life. <laughs> Sometime soon. I'm technically, technically, I'm not retired yet, but but we can we can do it now. We can do it now. All right, yeah. <laughs> Freddie's retired, and he's about to be a coach, media personality, all the above. Um, I, I couldn't be more proud of how far you've come Thanks, because you know it. It's a grind. Yeah. And there's a lot of ups and downs and twists and turns, and you're at peace right now. Yeah. Uh, and that that really that pumps me up that fills my heart <laughs> my um, it's, it's been 14 years since we've sat down and, and talked so to ke- catch back up and and see where you're at now um it gives me gives me happiness ah, man, we grown man you gotta grow up sometime right? hey give mama do uh my best i Absolutely. know she's she's recovering well and, and and doing her thing um but but we'll take We'll, we'll take it after break. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining. Uh, this was an incredible conversation with me and the original OG, the wonder kid, Freddie Adu. Uh, still more to come on Morning Footy. Uh, stay tuned.